Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Raymond, located in Hines County, Raymond, Mississippi, on the 12th of May, 1863. Using the momentum of their victory at Port Gibson, Union forces drove northeast to meet up with Union General William Tecumseh Sherman and his corps. Ulysses S. Grant, the overall commander of the Union forces, decided to move the Union troops through Cayuga and Auburn, hitting the Southern Railroad of Mississippi. The goal was then to shift Sherman and his forces west and to take Vicksburg from the east. Sherman's troops, under the command of James B. McPherson, reached Raymond with about 12,000 men from the 17th Corps. His goal was to dislodge Confederate Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton's forces, who were under the command of General John Gregg and his 4,000-man brigade. Gregg had received word of McPherson's arrival, and his scouts reported the approach of Union forces up the Utica Road. In response, Gregg sent Colonel Hiram Granbury with the 7th Texas Infantry Regiment and the 1st Tennessee Infantry Battalion to intercept them. Union cavalry were acting as forward scouts and found some of Granbury's skirmishers. The Union forces were unaware of the Confederate presence initially and were quickly pushed back. The Confederate scouts believed that only 2,500 Union troops were coming. When Gregg received word of 2,500 troops, he believed, like a lot of commanders, that the scouts were probably overestimating and thought the Union forces numbered under 2,000 men. Later that morning, McPherson sent more Union scouts ahead of his troops. This is when Confederate Captain H.M. Bledsoe and the Missouri Artillery opened fire with their three cannons. The Union Brigade, under the command of Brigadier General Elias Dennis, along with Brigadier General John E. Smith and his brigade, formed a line to counter the Confederate troops. The Confederate cannon and musket fire coated the area in smoke. This kept Confederate General Gregg from realizing the oncoming Union forces were far larger than he initially believed. The Confederate forces launched an attack against the Union troops. Having some success, they partially pushed back a portion of the Union forces. But eventually, the Union troops were rallied by Major General John A. Logan. With that, Logan pushed the Confederate troops back, including pushing two full regiments of Gregg's troops across the creek. Around 1 p.m., U.S. Colonel John Sanborn arrived and filled the weak spot in Logan's left flank. Along with 22 cannon, the Union forces pushed against the remaining Confederates. The Confederate forces' left flank collapsed like a straw house forcing Gregg to order retreat through Raymond and down to Jackson Road. Researchers say the Union lost at least 442 troops, including 66 killed, 339 wounded, and 37 missing. Confederate General Gregg reported back to command that he had lost 514 men. This included 72 killed, 252 wounded, and 190 missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.